thank you for tuning in to Being Brunswick. I'd first like to thank my sponsors, Dane Delane Salon and Surf Unlimited in Ocean Isle Beach. You will be able to see my different wardrobe styles throughout the show. Today, we are going to visit Jesse May Monroe and learn about the pet education program through Pausability. So I'm very excited and excited to learn about the new program and meet some kids at Jesse May Monroe. So stick with us for an episode of Being Brunswick. here with Janie Withers with Pausability. We are at Jesse May Elementary School here in Brunswick County and today we are here learning about an education program that you have started two years ago. But first I want our viewers to know what Pausability is if they are not familiar with it. So tell me a little bit about Pausability. Pausability is not a rescue group. We, we do fundraising for animal rescue groups and more importantly animal related animal welfare programs that affect Brunswick County and animals here. So tell me a little bit about when you say fundraising, what are some of the events that you do here in the community? We do our primary fundraiser is the Bicycle Poker Run. It's always the second Saturday in October on Ocean Isle Beach. Uh, you can ride your bike, you can ride a golf cart, you can walk, or you can run the event. You stop at 10 different sites on the island, sponsored by different local businesses, collect a playing card, and come back to the tent by the museum for the party afterwards. What are some of the other organizations, I know the kids are learning about it right now, but what are some of the other organizations that you work really well with in the county to save these animals? We work closely with Brunswick County Sheriff's Office Animal Protective Services. We support rescue groups like RACE, Rescue Animals Community Effort and Adopt an Angel. And they are what we call foster situation rescues. Then we support local shelters like Cattails, Soar, and Paws Place. A lot of people, Janie, in this county know about Pausability, but I don't think they know what you're doing in the schools right now. So this is one of, um, next week will be your last week here at Jesse May. Um, you have been doing this education program two years now, um, just here at Jesse May, but we're hoping after this that you will be in all the schools eventually in Brunswick County. But let's tell our viewers what you are doing with these kids at Jesse May in this education program. We have written and directed a six-week program to teach children why it's important to be responsible pet owners and to teach children about compassion for animals. And I think it's been a great program that you have started. Um, a lot of your volunteers are in there teaching right now, um, and our viewers will get to see a little taste of what they're learning. We are interviewed some of the kids to say, what have you learned from this program? And they all said, yes, we want our friends to do this program at other schools. So um, we truly hope that other schools in Brunswick County will accept this program because I think it is absolutely wonderful, and it makes awareness to our kids. So. It is important that the schools understand there's no cost to the school. The cost of this program is funded through donations. Mm -hmm. Sheriff Ingram's reelection campaign started the funding source for it last year. Okay. First Bank matched his funding source. Mm -hmm. BEMC uh, and the Rotary in Shalote were all funding sources for this program in our school system. And Pausability made up the difference. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important things, and I talked to the principal about this earlier, is you're coming to them at the school. They don't have to transport kids. They don't have to worry about the scheduling of that. You're coming to them, and your volunteers are teaching the class. So I think that's a wonderful opportunity and, and makes it a little easier for the schools. It makes it easier and less liability for the schools. It gives the teacher of this class for, for six weeks a little bit of a break. She gets to work an hour to do her lesson plans. She's in the classroom with us, so it's easier to uh, work the class with the teacher there mm -hmm. to thwart any, any problem that may come up with right. the students, but there have been none so far. The students have been receptive to the lessons learned and they've enjoyed the classes. We, our teachers have thoroughly enjoyed this program. And you enjoy making a difference when you know you're changing something, mm -hmm. it's easier to do it. Our teachers know they have changed the way children view animals, and they've changed the way children, the compassion level with children. Mm -hmm. All children want to love an animal. They have to be taught to right. do something How else. To do right. They have to be taught to be not compassionate. Normally, naturally, they are a compassionate. 
Well, right now we're looking at fourth graders that are going through this program. Do you hope to get younger classes, younger kids, and then older children to do this program as well? This program is directed to the fourth grader. It's directed on that level. Uh, we had the fourth grade students last year. They are, this year, fifth grade students here at Jesse May. They even wanted to do the program mm -hmm. again, but it is directed only at this time to fourth grade students. Okay. Well, Janie, I appreciate you allowing me to come in today and, and get a little taste of this program. I've learned a lot. I saw videos that I had never seen before. Um, I'm a volunteer at the shelter, so I really appreciate this program that you're doing with kids. Um, if anyone wants to see your website or get in contact with Possibility, how can, what's your website? They can get some more information on the events. It is www.pause-ability.org. And again, we are here with Janie Withers with Possibility, so I appreciate you being here and letting me in the school today. So thank you so much. You've had an I can statement for each of your lessons so far, right? Well, today you're going to have a brand new one. And the I can statement for today is, I can be an advocate for animals. Let's hear everybody. I can be an advocate for animals. I can read some minds. I can hear the question, what is an advocate? Well, I think Ms. Jan is going to help you answer that question in a minute, but I'll bet some of you already have some idea of what that means. But that will be our lesson for today, telling you how you can be an advocate for animals. Okay, Mr. Steve, can we have them in summary say all of the previous Let's do I that. can statements together? Let's go through the previous ones. The first one. I can be a responsible pet owner. Second lesson, I can help stop pet overpopulation in our county. Third, I can make sure my pet is healthy and safe. I can be safe around dogs and cats. And last week's lesson, I can provide for a pet for its entire life. I am here at Jesse May again with uh, Principal Otto, and we're going to talk a little bit about this program that has come into your school. You are the only school right now that has the Possibility um, Education Program in your school for the second year, um, and today we are here watching the fourth graders learn all about how to be responsible with their pets. So what does it mean to you as a principal of the school to have this program in your school and to be the first school that has this program? Right. We were very honored last year when we were approached by the Possibility Organization to host the first pilot program in Brunswick County. I know that they want to incorporate that through all the fourth grade classrooms okay. in the county. And it was just a great partnership and we appreciate uh, you know, the village to help raise the child. And they learned very important lessons in here. As you know, their goal is for the children to become responsible pet owners, but not only that, compassionate pet owners. So with the program the children are learning about a lot of character education and those skills they'll be able to carry through a lifetime with them and these kids are also you know learning here at the school but then they're going home and if their parents don't know the responsibility or haven't learned it through their childhood yes. these kids can teach their parents and their family members and other sisters brothers anything like that they can teach them this responsibility as well so i think it's just a great program um, if any of the other schools are, are looking to start mm -hmm. this program what advice could you give them on, you know, if they should do it or if they shouldn't, I guess? My advice is to take advantage of the program, absolutely. The children um, love it, and every day it's a great day at Jesse May, but on Thursday <laughs> when the pet education volunteers here, it's an extra special day at Jesse oh. May. Their faces just light up when they're able to bring the pets in with them, and they're becoming advocates. So the lessons that they learn today, being educated on what they are, it's going to make a brighter future for not only the animals, but for our students. I know you guys have been talking about the two animals, um, Barney and Snowball. Now remember, Barney was a four-year-old indoor kitty, and Barney was, tell me if it's a male, neutered or spayed. Yes? Maybe. And it's going to be a boy. So boys are neuter, right? Male animals are neuter, right? Um, his owner was no longer able to care for him, so he ended up um, in a shelter. But even though he was an indoor kitty, he was neutered because cats get out, and his owner did not want him to contribute to the unwanted kitties. Remember, we talked about Snowball. The Snowball was a dog who was not well cared for. He didn't live in a home. He had fleas and ticks, and um, he wasn't in really good condition, was not given his proper medications. 
And guess what? Snowball was pregnant. Had 12 puppies. So some really nice volunteer named Tammy Foster took Snowball into her home so the puppies would have a nice, quiet, safe, loving environment to live. And Mr. Steve is going to tell you a little bit more what happened to these um, animals. Well, first of all, I think we all know that they were what? Uh, adopted, right? Mm -hmm. They both got adopted. Literally, two people came to their rescue. They actually came to the rescue where those two animals were and adopted them. So it was Mason and Michelle. Mason and Michelle came to the rescue. First, Mason, a fourth grader who had lived with his grandmother and had recently finished the pet responsibility program at the school, was eager to adopt a pet at Brunswick County Sheriff's Animal Protective Services. You guys all familiar with Brunswick County Sheriff's Animal Protective Services? Well, that's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. <laughs> Sometimes we abbreviate it BCSAPS, other times just APS for Animal Protective Services. <clears throat> that is the county shelter in Supply. How many of you have been to Supply? We have opened it up to the public and we're working with the community to make it a better place. We've turned it more into a adoption center versus just animal control. The main focus is to adopt out as many animals and find them good homes. It's a happy place now. It's where pets come to find a new life and a new start and a better start because they'll be with a responsible pet owner. Whipped here at the shelter to house about 300 dogs and cats. We have kennels outside, we have livestock barns. Under the sheriff's office, we've added a play yard. The Brunswick County Sheriff's Office Animal Protective Services needs the community's help in helping control the pet overpopulation. It's extremely important to spay and neuter your animals. We have several venues throughout the county uh, now that are available. Uh, particularly when you come adopt one from our shelter, uh, you receive a voucher to assist you with the spay and neutering. So it, it's important to be a responsible pet owner. Utilizing the volunteers, tapping into that resource has enabled us to be much more effective in not only the care for the animals while they're here at the shelter, but assisting us in getting these animals adopted out. Every animal that comes in here is a good animal. Uh, some of them just lack training. So through proper training, the volunteers, the volunteers implement the same training with the animals, which makes them more adoptable and better pets. We work to socialize the animals. We take the very shy animals, we build their trust, we work with them so that they understand that not all humans are bad and that they can meet good humans that will care for them and treat them properly. If people are not going to come to us, then we're going to go to them. So we're fortunate enough to be able to equip a mobile adoption unit and go out into the communities. When we take the animals out, we work with them, we spend time with them, it gets them social, it gets them on an outing away from the shelter. They meet people, they develop the social skills they need in order to be adopted. To adopt an animal, you're not only saving a life, you're helping create more room in the shelter for the ones that are here to come up available to Adoption Row. The cost is very affordable. I am so proud of what the Sheriff's Office has done with the shelter and the changes that have been made. They're positive changes, they've brought so much resource, they bring a new thinking to adoption. I'm here with Miss Price, um, fourth grade teacher here at Jesse May, and you've been here 11 years, so yeah. you've been here for a long time, so I yeah. know you love it here. I um, So Possibility has come in and started this program, this is their second year um, here at Jesse May, and what does it mean to you that they have come in and chosen your class to teach this program to your fourth graders? Oh, I was honored, and I was very excited for the program. And I'm glad they actually did because this is the elementary school and I'm glad they come in, mm -hmm. catch the children while they're young. And since they've been here, the kids have learned a lot about animals. They're very appreciative of animals and very respectful of animals and they have learned to love them. 
they talk about it all week long and, and talk about yes. the program and animals and the ones they want to adopt and, and all of that? Yes, they do. They actually talk more about the animals than what I have actually <laughs> been teaching them. I'm so sure. they really love the program, and I'm so happy that they are actually have a chance to come in and talk with them and teach them a lot of things about mm -hmm. actually how to love and take care of animals. Would you like to see this program in, in other schools here in the county and continue at Jesse May? Yes. Every teacher should feel like I, I do. They will love it. I mean, it's very good. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here with us. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. two volunteers of possibility with me right now. Thank you so much for allowing me to come in Jesse May today and see what you're doing with these fourth graders. Um, I'm so excited about what you're teaching these kids about being responsible pet owners. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you started this program and what you're teaching the kids. This program actually started in Moore County and there was an advocacy group in Moore County that created this fantastic curriculum which we ran last year and what we found is that some of the lessons had too much crammed in it and there wasn't enough time for the students to really do some of the great activities things were too rushed mm -hmm. so this summer Connie and I spent time editing down the curriculum to give the students more time for interactive activities and each of the lessons is designed around an I can statement and the entire program is based on the sad problem in Brunswick County which mm -hmm. is pet overpopulation so the whole focus of the curriculum is to to get our students to be more responsible and actually to start spreading the word about the good things about spay and neuter. And these students have been completely fantastic. It's been great experience and I've enjoyed every, every moment. And they're having fun with it. You're teaching them and they're having fun. I think that's one of the most important things and they're excited about being a pet owner if they're not one already. So I, I think it's a great program. Tell me a little bit, Janet, about what you taught them today. So you taught one of the classes today with Steve and you start with three words. So tell us about the three words and what you do when you're teaching these kids. The focus words we used today were foster, advocate, and cruelty. Uh, the students also saw a couple videos the first video we saw um, was about the animal shelter, and um, Lieutenant Tolly uh, described the shelter. There were pictures of it. Um, we saw the cats and dogs in it and the play areas, the volunteers walking the dogs, and just what a wonderful um, environment the animals live in until they are adopted. Uh, the second video was about Springer, and Springer was a dog that unfortunately was abandoned, and Lieutenant Tolly um, rescued the animal. Um, and Lieutenant Tolly actually adopted Springer, and the students are going to see Springer next week, so they see how well Springer is doing, and he's happy and just living in such a loving environment. Well, again, I have learned a lot from sitting in there with the fourth, grader, fourth graders and seeing the videos. Um, I am a volunteer at the shelter, so I had not seen that video before. Um, so, again, I appreciate you come, letting me come into the school today and um, kind of seeing just a little bit about what you're teaching these kids, and I hope that we can do this some more um, in other schools in Brunswick County. So thank you again for letting me be here. When our officers uh, responded to the home, they found the dog in its own feces, in its own urine, no bowls, no food or water inside the kennel. The dog just kind of looked up at them like, where you been? I've been waiting on you. Nobody knows how much longer he would have lived. You could count all the bones in his body from his neck to his tail. The dog couldn't stand up for maybe 10 seconds at a time and then would just fall back down on the floor. He was taken back to the animal shelter in Brunswick County. When he got there, he was extremely emaciated, extremely weak. The next morning, 
a vast improvement. It was obvious that it was just deprived of food and water. Hey there, I'm Springer. So I was pacing back and forth and all I wanted to do was to get out and run and play, but my paws just could not open the cage. We took one look at him and even as bad as he was, he still had that will. You could see in his eyes, you could see in his soul that, man, I'm, I'm still here, I'm still going, just give me a chance. That he survived is really due to the Brunswick County Animal Shelter um, and their great care. He is now an ambassador for our shelter. We take him to adoption events. He goes to work with me. Yeah, you know, my paws hurt from all the autographs I've been stamping. So, uh, Springer, do you have a girlfriend? Yeah, I have several. He's a fellow co-worker. He's not only my friend, he's not only my pet, now he's one of our co-workers. Yeah, if that's the case, I expect to see a check every two weeks. People come to the shelter to see Springer, and Springer is just as much of that shelter as the shelter is much of him. So I was left in the cage for three weeks. No big deal. I mean, look at me now. My life is great. Two of the fourth graders here with me right now, I have got Alex and Madison, and they just went through the class with Pausability, so I'm going to ask you all a question. Alex, what have you learned from the Pausability program? I have learned uh, when, when you go up to a dog, never put it on its head when you first see it because they can't see and, and I think you're hurting them. And, and when you first see them, ball your hand up like this mm -hmm. and so they can sniff it. Right, absolutely. And what have you learned, Madison? That if you leave a dog out outside and then you leave, they might escape and then get ran over from. Right. Now, since you have almost finished the program, you've got one more week, you get to meet several dogs next week. Would you want your friends to go through this program at their school? Yes, would. I would. Would you want your friends to go through this program? Yes. Okay. Would you do it again? I would definitely do it again. So you've learned a lot from this program and you would definitely do it maybe next year? and learn a little bit more about how to be a responsible pet owner. Yes. And Alex, do you have any pets right now? Yes, I have a chinchilla called Fluffy, and she <laughs> likes to chew on everything and run around. <laughs> and Madison, do you have any pets right now? Yes, I have a, one dog, which is a Pomeranian, and a tabby cat. They're both, they're both named Max and Pumpkin, and I also have three turtles, one's a baby and two are young. And now that you are considered responsible pet owners, do you want any more pets right now? I would like a dog and maybe a cat, but I'm allergic to both. <laughs> I'm allergic to a, to, to, to a cat the, the most, I think, because when I get near a cat, my eyes start to the water oh, a lot. Okay, so you can, maybe your friends that have pat, uh, cat, cats and dogs, you can just see pictures of them. Will that be okay? Maybe. And then you can have other animals. Do you want any more animals? Yeah, I was, I was thinking that probably I can have another Pomeranian because I had another Pomeranian, but he died when he was 16. Okay. Well, hopefully you can have some more animals when you get older and be responsible pet owners. So thank you so much for sitting here with me. Thank you for watching Being Brunswick. If you have any new ideas, please contact us at the Chamber at 910-754-6644. Thanks again, and we'll see you next month. The level that we operate today would not be possible without our volunteers. Volunteering is part of my life. I, I wouldn't know what to do without it. This is really where the volunteer program began in the Calabay substation. We have administrative volunteers responsible for answering the phone and greeting visitors. They work in areas such as helping the training officer maintain training records on all of the employees. Uh, they work on data entry in this office. They enter arrest reports, traffic stop reports. They answer phones. They route calls to the right person. The volunteers at the courthouse assist the deputy with visitor screening information, answer questions, greet the public. 
Hilton at the detention center. Their job is basically to assist the deputy with visitor control, answering inquiries, telling people what their bond is for relatives or friends. The unsolved case team, they pour through old, old cases in, in an attempt to solve them or at least reopen them. Uh, without that, there would be no cold case review without those volunteers. We have our citizen patrol, that's 61 volunteers out in patrol cars. In the course of a patrol, they may encounter uh, a traffic accident, they may encounter a stalled vehicle, uh, they may encounter something like we just encountered where there's a, a truck blocking the highway. A volunteer going out and assisting with traffic control at a church or a function where a large number of people are going to be really saves lives. We have involuntary commitment uh, transport teams, both male and female, they accompany a deputy when they have to transport somebody that's been involuntary committed. We have four trained volunteers that support the DWI checkpoints that the Sheriff Office and the State Highway Patrol run. We have the Marine Patrol, which assists with the, uh, both of the watercraft. Uh, they serve as crewmen. They help do the maintenance on the watercraft. We have a volunteer that serves with the aviation unit. Whenever the helicopter is called out, he is generally the observer and the forward-looking infrared radar operator. And then we have the chaplain corps, which is a, a specialty all, of the, all into themselves. They have, they have eight chaplains. When you come out of the Citizen Academy, you're prepared to be an effective volunteer in whatever area you choose. That's the best way. And I'll tell you, after 14 weeks, I've got a whole new vision and understanding of what the Sheriff's Office is all about. His people have explained and shown us everything they do and everything they go through during these 12, 14 weeks of classes. I did the Citizen Academy because I wanted to know more about the law in, in Brunswick County. It's rewarding. It's, it's, you know, I'm just retired, so I, don't, I have a lot of time on my hands. So golf was good for a while, but this is more rewarding. Law enforcement is an important part of the community. Given that resources are scarce for most government functions today, anything a volunteer can do that allows a law enforcement officer to concentrate on his primary duties uh, is given back to the community. Uh, and working with the co-workers that we have in the sheriff's office and the leadership of the sheriff's office is just very rewarding. We are able to provide better service to the citizens of this county and that is our ultimate goal, taking care of our citizens in this county, making Brunswick County a better place to live.